In just over a year, our Olympians will head to Paris to compete in the 2024 Olympics. Now, it's always one of the most exciting times of the year, of course. But one thing many of us don't really think about in the years between the glitz and glamour of the Olympics is how hard it is on our athletes. The constant training, the injuries, illnesses, pushing themselves day in, day out. And of course, a lot of them don't get paid a lot. One aspect of that that often gets overlooked even more is the pressure for our female athletes when it comes to how they look and what they weigh to constantly be at their peak. Now, Ellie Cole is one of Australia's Paralympic champions. She is, in fact, Australia's most decorated female Paralympian with, oh, gosh, this is ridiculous, <laughs> 17 medals, including six gold from four Paralympic Games, thanks to her incredible efforts in the pool. I'm so proud to say she joins me here now. Thank you so much. You wrote the most incredible piece that just gave us such an insight. And I was a sports host for 15 years. It taught me things. Why did you decide to share? I think, you know, Erin, I got to the end of my swimming career and I had a lot to reflect on on my journey. And I know that, you know, a lot of athletes retire at the end of an Olympic or a Paralympic cycle and have an opportunity to reflect. And unfortunately, um, for, for most of us, we have some horror stories from our career. And I did want to be very honest and candid and share those stories with Australia and hoping to make some change and so that the athletes that are coming through for Brisbane 2032 can have a really positive experience when they finish their 16 year swimming career, like most do, <laughs> and, and an opportunity to reflect on that too. Is it a hard balance? Because obviously as athletes, what you weigh, the, the, the fat composition, skin fold tests, it's all a, a fairly significant part of it. How do you balance that then with making sure that you're not damaging young people who are vulnerable? There's certainly, I suppose, an element of where com a body composition does belong in sport. But um, in my experience, being a young athlete in particular, you know, you're quite impressionable when you're 16 or 17 years old and beginning a sport. And before you know it, you're in this bubble of high performance sport. And, you know, it's little things about like the language and the culture and the environment that's that you're surrounded by every single day that can slowly chip away at your self-confidence, particularly when it comes to body image. Um, and so it's really important to be able to protect that and to be able to mitigate that as much as we can and protect these athletes that are coming through the system um, so that they don't have, you know, long-term health benefits related to their sport because uh, I suppose we all want to remember why we begin sport in the first place and first and foremost, it is enjoyment. What was your lowest point, do you think? I think it was certainly probably when I was at the AIS and that's when I, what I referenced in my article because I was fresh out of high school and just joined this high performance swimming, swimming program and was given all of this wonderful information on how to become the best athlete that I could. And I think me being quite impatient, I wanted to win a gold medal as quickly as I could. And I did that and approached that in a very unhealthy way. And there just wasn't an education piece around, um, I suppose, long term effects on nutrition. Um, whether it was with the athlete or with the coach or with management. But we're seeing a really positive change in sport. Um, you know, just yesterday, Swimming Australia launched their disordered eating um, policies and guidelines to help mitigate the risk of um, disordered eating within young athletes. But it's just a, a real concern that is always going to be there. And we just have to be um, very gentle with how we approach that with our language and our environment. Yeah, it's terrifying because every day, young Australians, men and women, struggle immensely with their body image. An athlete, that must be just compounded tenfold. Do you think this, this uh, decision by Swimming Australia is, is genuine or box ticking? I, I think it is genuine. I think you, you'd be forgiven to believe that it's a knee-jerk reaction to an article that came out on Wednesday, but you know this has been in the process since 2015. Um, they're very genuine with the concerns. I think uh, they're very genuine with understanding the, the power imbalances that can exist between coaches and athletes. Um, and they do want to make the experience of sport very, very positive for that athlete. Um, and so, you know, we have some wonderful people within the organisation of Swimming Australia who are doing everything that they can to mitigate the risks, but they will always be there. Um, but, you know, unless we speak about it, I think that um, they're just, you know, going, not going to be ad addressed in the way that they need to be. So I think that was really the purpose of the article on Wednesday. Well, you're doing a brilliant job. Uh, this line really struck me and I, I'm reading because I want to make sure I get it right. I sometimes wonder if I would have become an athlete if I was able-bodied, and I don't think I would have because I wouldn't have had to prove myself so much in those early years. That makes you emotional, <laughs> hearing that back. There's, there's just a lot to unpack there. Um, I think if you, if you think about what disability was like in particular in the early 1990s, when I lost my leg, my parents' biggest concern was uh, the opportunities that I wouldn't have as opposed to my twin sister growing up because I had a disability. 
Um, and so to be able to use sport and see sport as this really wonderful platform and to be hurt by it ultimately at the end of the day was really heartbreaking, but it has given me a lot of wonderful, wonderful things. Um, and I know that the athletes that are going to be training for Brisbane 2032 are going to have a very different story to tell. What is in store for you now? What next? I am so excited. Well, firstly, I'm, I've been retired for six months from swimming and I'm very much enjoying... You're far too young to be retired. I am That's so <laughs> excited um, about the opportunities that are out there um, for athletes who are transitioning into the corporate world. I'm um, working very closely with my sponsors still. Um, Give them a plug, because the fact <laughs> they've stuck with you once you've retired is a really good thing. Optus and Toyota have been well standing played. by me for a very, very long time. Um, APM as well, which have been incredible in teaching me on diversity inclusion outside of sport as well. Um, but my biggest dream is to be the chef de mission of the 2032 Paralympic team. So oh, I love that. I'm putting it out there right now. Um, I really want to be able to be part of the team again, but on the other side of the fence and make sure that the environment for athletes is as wonderful as it was um, when Kate McLaughlin was our chef de mission for our Paralympic team. She made my experience in um, Tokyo and Rio so incredible. So I want to be able to do the same thing for athletes. I'm going to get this tape, label it <laughs> and put it somewhere away because I'm sure as hell probably won't still be. Is, hopefully it will be, yeah. <laughs> and we'll bring it back out. Uh, thank you so very much. I, I think you've done an incredible job and your article was really eye-opening and I think that, that athletes here in Australia will have a better experience off the back of your incredible efforts and, and speaking out because it's brave to do so. Thank Ellie you so Cole, much. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.